On October 25th, 2016, the budget GPU market was revolutionized with the release of the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. Offering decent 1080p performance at a sub $200 price tag, the 1050 Ti was an ambitious card for its time, and has been the go-to choice for many budget PC gamers for nearly three years. So with the rumored release of the GTX 1650 coming soon, it's time to take a final look at the legendary 1050 Ti, and determine if it's worth buying in 2019. Okay, so the flavor of card we'll be testing today comes from Gigabyte, and was purchased for $160 off Amazon about a year and a half ago. This 1050 Ti features no external power connector, which means it has a 75W TDP which is rather efficient when considering its core. Other flavors of this card do come with multiple cooling solutions and power configurations, but for what this card is packing under the hood, this flavor is perfectly adequate for mild overclocking and staying within decent temps. Hard specs for the 1050 Ti are actually pretty decent for what you're paying. Featuring the GP107 chip, this card packs 910 p capable specs into a rather compact 132 squared millimeter die. From a quick glance, the 1050 Ti seems to be cut from the same fabric as its previous generation contemporaries. But when looking at general compute, it sits ahead of its little brother the GTX 1050 and its spiritual predecessors the GTX 950 and 750 Ti. Based on this rather positive spec sheet, the 1050 Ti seems reasonably equipped to chew through 1080p gaming workloads, even though it's not a huge jump from the previous generation 950 in terms of silicon. So to see exactly how the 1050 Ti stacks up to a similarly priced card from the red team, we're going to be comparing it to the RX 480, which performs almost identically to the newer RX 570, which can actually be found for less money than the Nvidia equivalent. Our test system specs are rather mid-range and shouldn't impede either card's performance, with a rather powerful CPU and more than enough RAM so there's no bottlenecks. So today we'll be stacking the GTX 1050 Ti up against our surrogate RX 570, and we'll find out if the 1050 Ti is even worth consideration if you're looking to build a new rig. Alright, so starting off, Apex Legends at 1080p, the resolution that Nvidia claims the 1050 Ti is targeted at. And based on these results, it definitely is able to hold up on its own. But when our surrogate RX 570 is added into the mix, the more expensive Nvidia card falls behind by a rather noticeable 29% margin. So yeah, when compared to what AMD has to offer, the 1050 Ti would have to make some large graphical sacrifices to get these two cards in the same performance range. And things don't look too great either when running our Battlefield 5 benchmark with the NVIDIA GTX card trailing behind the cheaper AMD offering by a huge 49%. Sure, the 1050 Ti is targeted at delivering console-level performance, but when compared to our substitute RX 570, this performance from the green team just doesn't cut it, especially when this offering from AMD is priced at or below the 1050 Ti. Black Ops 4 is a little nicer to the 1050 Ti, with the budget-oriented card closing the gap ever so slightly at 1080p. But once again, it's outclassed by our surrogate RX 570, which hits a rather stable 60fps average. But the one thing I did notice on the 1050 Ti was a significantly lower frame rate when landing in on the Blackout map. This quickly picked up to around where the average sat, but overall, the performance at 1080p just isn't all that impressive when considering the price. Up next is a game that performs rather well on budget hardware, especially with Vulcan. Doom 2016 actually performed rather well on both cards, and although our substitute RX 570 took the lead by a significant margin, it was still very playable on the Nvidia offering, which closed the performance to only a 23% differential. Far Cry 5 saw similar improvements to performance on the part of the 1050 Ti, but it was once again trailing the AMD offering, this time by just under 22%. While 51 FPS is definitely more than playable and way better than what the consoles offer, it's still not up to the 60 FPS threshold that many of us demand from our systems, and frame times were just all over the place during this benchmark, with some rather significant stuttering, probably due to the memory bandwidth being tapped out. But one of the strongest performances of the 1050 Ti came in the form of For Honor, and at our standard 1080p bench run, the Nvidia card stood behind by 26%. While that may seem rather large, when getting down to the brass tacks, the performance pulled by the 1050 Ti without any exaggeration is quite impressive, 
Ultra settings at 1080p while delivering a consistent 70 plus FPS is a great experience, and it's made all the sweeter that this was the cream of the crop budget offering only about 3 years ago. Fortnite also performed rather well, even though it trailed behind our AMD test card by 16%. But once again, at these settings, it's still an impressive performance on the part of the 1050 Ti, despite the fact that it's proving to be the slower card. Our next bench run was GTA 5, which can be downright brutal on lower end cards, especially when it comes to poor memory bandwidth. But from how the 1050 Ti is performing, it seems like the GPU itself just isn't able to work through the admittedly demanding game. But this is at 1080p and you can always lower resolutions or settings to target whatever frame rate or performance tier you want. Now to wrap up our test suite today, we tried out PUBG on our 1050 Ti, and when stacked up to our RX 570 equivalent, it falls behind by another rather significant 33% margin. While this does crush what both the PS4 and Xbox One S offer in terms of performance, it is still dragging behind the equivalently and occasionally cheaper card from AMD. And I guess that's ultimately the moral of the story when it comes to the 1050 Ti. It's a decent card for the here and now, and will offer you a great console-esque experience. But for the money you're paying, you're leaving a lot of performance on the table when there are cards from AMD that will outperform this Nvidia offering by anywhere between 50 to 20 percent. In all of the tests we ran today, the 1050 Ti was consistently slower, and although there were some points where it wasn't that far behind, there were also other points where it trailed behind our substitute RX 570 by a rather tragic 49%. Now, am I saying that you need to get tons of frames to enjoy your gaming experience? No, I used this exact 1050 Ti as my main GPU and I was perfectly content. But now that there are other, more powerful options that might actually cost you less, the 1050 Ti has kinda lost its foothold on the budget market. I love the 1050 Ti, don't get me wrong. It was a great card in its time, and it's still a gaming monster when it comes to sub 1080p gaming. But looking into the future, the more reasonably equipped AMD RX and Vega cards will simply give you more bang for your buck in 2019 and certainly moving into the future. If you're looking for a card at around the 1050 Ti's price point, it will be a much more worthwhile investment to go with AMD alternatives, and more specifically the RX 570. It just simply has the core specs to be able to run modern and future games at higher frame rates. But if you really are itching to get a 1050 Ti, then it's still a great card if you're willing to compromise on a few settings here and there. If you're upgrading from integrated graphics or simply don't have access to other GPUs, then this card is still great, and it gave me a happy gaming experience for over a year and a half. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. If you want to support us over here at ProCU Tech, then check out our Patreon page, and check out our recently reworked tier system. We're hoping to make some big changes to the channel in 2019, and I can't wait to have this experience with you. And also tell us, what do you think of the GTX 1050 Ti? Do you have one, or have you heard good about them? I personally loved my 1050 Ti when it was the main card in my rig, but tell us what you think. I can't wait to see what you have to say, and I hope you have a fantastic day. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.